Level design is the backbone of any great game, but when we look at level design as newcomers, it's difficult to absorb the discipline as a whole because it's just so blooming big. It's because of this that I am ashamed to admit that up until now, I have neglected the level design in my VR game. But that ends today, because I'm going to see if I can devise a way to design and build my own levels with custom geometry despite having very little 3D modelling experience. And the first aspect I'm looking to tackle? Asset creation. So let's start by looking at the problem. I needed a way to create interior environment assets all with a consistent style which were easily customizable, quick to create, looked good and were suitable for using in the quest, meaning low poly count and small textures. <sighs> and if you think that sounds difficult, that's because it is. My first thought was to sway towards a retro PS1-esque pixel style, which might complement the horror aspect of my game. However, turns out pixel art is hard. Making 3D assets that look good with such low resolution textures and geometry is an art form in and of itself. I was starting to lose hope when I stumbled across something I'd never actually heard of before. Trim sheets. A trim sheet is a texture that tiles in just the U or the V direction and can hold multiple different patterns. And you might be asking, what makes that better than any other texture? Well, a lot of the time your assets will have dedicated textures used for single or sometimes shared across a few different models. This is good for assets that the player will be looking at a lot, also referred to as hero assets, like the player model, guns, etc. But creating dedicated textures for all your environment is not only a time consuming process, but can end up getting very processor intensive, unless you're going to cram everything onto one sheet, which is what the modular assets I'd been using had done, so there's nothing wrong with doing that. Anyway, usually this is where tiling textures are used instead, which if you've done any game dev or 3D design, guarantee you've used these a bunch. They're useful for grass, dirt, concrete, bricks, wood, basically any pattern that's going to repeat over and over. And you can use a few of these tiling textures to create whole levels. But the issue there is repetition and lack of variation. This is where trim sheets come in. They nestle nicely between dedicated and tiling textures, allowing for more variation and detail than a fully tiled texture can offer, and more reusability than the dedicated counterparts. What opened my eyes to the potential of these trim sheets was this article, where a 3D artist called Andrew Kelly created this phenomenal sci-fi room using just one trim sheet. I'll link the article in the description, it is an extremely good read and demonstrates just what can be done with trim sheets in the hands of somebody who knows how to use them. Now, I'm no 3D artist, and seeing as I've only just discovered their existence and power, using them probably isn't going to be as simple as Andrew made it look. But this method ticked all of my boxes. So if I could devise a workflow that utilised trim sheets and took into account my entry level skill, I knew I would be on track to having some fantastic looking environment assets. The first thing I set out to do was remodel and texture the hangar area with this trim sheet I found online. I thought this would be a good initial test to see if I'd be able to utilise the trim sheets to any degree of competency. And to my surprise, in just a few hours, I had a half decent looking hangar area. I mean, I'll let you be the judge of that, but as a proof of concept, I would say it's done its job. I then needed to move on to my next area, which would require more than just the one room. And seeing as how the hangar was a success, I set some time aside to plan how I was going to go about creating these levels. Here it is. First thing I need to do is white box my levels. Thankfully, I already have a bunch of these done, so I I'm gonna skip this bit for now. But for future levels, we'll start with the white boxing. Next is the planning phase. After I'm happy with my white box, I need to identify what assets I'm going to need to build at the level. So for this level, I need two corridors, a wide one, a short one, a corner corridor, a ring corridor that's going to loop around, and a large cylindrical room that will sit in the center. Now, I move on to my planning phase. Again, pla planning part two. I began sketching out the pieces I needed in a 2D CAD software. Now, this is somewhat overkill. I can't say I've seen anybody else doing this when building assets, but this is a step more built for me, specifically as a non-3D artist, to quickly visualise designs without having to model. If you were to try and replicate this workflow yourself, you could just do a rough sketch or even skip this step out entirely, depending on your modelling experience. A lot of you probably think this part of the workflow is kind of redundant. Anyway, step three. With our 2D plans drawn and ready, I can either pull these straight into Blender as reference or just have it up on a separate monitor as I model. 
and once the model is complete, it's time to make use of those trim sheets. By quickly assigning the material to the model and positioning the UVs in the desired position, I'm able to make these low poly models look nice and detailed. I then finish off the process by exporting the model into my Unity project and we are done. Then I just repeat steps three to five until all of my environment assets are created and I've gone from this to this. The fantastic thing about this workflow is it's quick, simple, infinitely customizable, and it produces great looking environments with low poly models. I'll be trying to refine this process more as I carry on through development, but let me know in the comments what you think the best way is to design levels for VR games, and whether or not you think my method is genius or unnecessarily overcomplicated. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you want more devlogs and VR dev content, don't forget to subscribe. Now I need to go and find a way to make these levels scary.